everyone, and welcome to another K and K Sports Show YouTube Short. I am joined today. I'm the Fraud Slayer, by the way, and I'm joined today by my main man, Kurt Valenti. Kurt, how are you? I'm good, Mr. Kirkpatrick. How are you? Nice afternoon. Absolutely. Uh, real quick, on today's show, we're going to talk about 2020 wide receiving cores, the most dangerous cores in wide receiving in, in the NFL today. Uh, well, that being said, let's get right into it. Okay. There's a lot of new exciting ones. I mean, I know I'm excited as a Bronco fan, but uh, we got Tampa Bay. We got Brady down there with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Um, again, my Denver Broncos high flying. Of course, we got Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, I yep. want you to start today, Mister Kirkpatrick. Give me a give me a couple of your top ones. You want a couple of top ones? Okay, uh, the, I got the I got the original usual suspects. I got the the uh, Saints. Saints are up there because of, I think, the best wide receiver in football, Michael Thomas. Uh, an addition of Emmanuel Sanders helps them with veteran presence. Uh, they still got uh, Jared Cook at wide receiver, at, at tight end, excuse me. And uh, Kamara is another wide receiving threat. Even though he's a running back, I'll take him as a threat. Absolutely. He's another oh. re he's another receiver in that offense for them. Oh, I went I went the easy route on my first one. I'm going to go into a couple more deep deep sleeper ones that people may not forget in a couple minutes, but I went the easy route in the usual on the first one. Okay. How about you? Uh I'm going to give props to Tampa Bay. You know, again, everyone knows I'm not the biggest Brady guy, but hey, when you have Evans, you had uh Goodwin, you know, you got Gronk. It's it, it's nice. I mean, it, it's 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 a nice set of weapons for him. And, you know, the thing I like about that, too, is Bruce Arians. I mean, he he's, you know, an offensive guy. So he's going to put them in situation. The thing that's going to be interesting is, is Brady going to adapt to him or is he going to adapt to Brady? And it's going to make it interesting. But listen, that's that that's a nice to defend that. It's going to be uh, it's a problem. So Absolutely. I'll go Tampa Bay. Absolutely. I'm going to throw one out there now. Uh, I think can catch people by surprise this year. And that's the Buffalo Bills. And our friend, Will Cologne, who hosts uh, Viva Los Bills, will like this one. I got the Buffalo Bills because of their addition of Stefan Diggs, their deep threat, John Brown, and their slot receiver, Cole Beasley. In a division that they can easily, all things click for the Bills, I think – and I can't believe I'm saying this because of how many years the Patriots have won the AFC East. But if all things click right for the Bills, they can run away with this division. They should. They should. And everybody stays healthy in that receiving core. Tight end is a little on the you know weaker side, but they do have a couple sleepers there too. But those three receivers are three different types of receivers, and that's what I love about them. Uh and Josh Allen can throw the deep ball. He's not the most accurate of passers, but he can throw the deep ball. So to have Brown and Diggs and then Beasley up the middle, watch out. Uh, they're da they're going to be dangerous. Okay. That's my sleeper dangerous one right there. All right. Uh, what do you want from me? You want a sleeper or another? I – I'm holding off on your boys, but they're they're on there. So why don't you talk about your boys? All right, I'll talk about my boys. I, I mean, I'm absolutely ecstatic with what we got. You know, I, th the past couple years, definitely last year, we probably had the worst receiving core in the NFL, um, along probably with the, the past couple years, the worst touch with the worst uh, quarterbacks. But now you're giving me a definite number one, Cortland Sutton, 1,300, 1,400 yard guy, 10 touchdowns. You're adding Jer uh, uh, Jerry Judy, who probably everyone's saying is probably going to be their number one receiver. So, I mean, if if that's going to bump Sutton down to your number two, I mean, you got to be ecstatic about that. Now we add on KJ Hamler, who if he would have run the forty, they're saying it would have been under four three. Um, the guy's electric. He's basically, you know, could he be like a Tyreek Hill? You know, can he be that now as our third guy? And I want to add on Noah Fant. I mean, you know, yep. everyone's high on him. 
and the thing about that is, look at the age in that group. I mean, that's a group we could have this group five, six, seven years together. So walking in together is scary. I love it. I love the Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy one two. Listen, somebody's going to be single covered. It's hey, it's a home run for Drew Lock. This is it, make or break for Drew Lock. He he may never have better weapons than he does this year. So yeah. I'm ecstatic though. What do you think about them, real quick? Uh, I know we have a little bet going on in, in, in our things. So if Drew Locke can be the guy, I might be eating those Rocky Mountain oysters because not only do you have, like you said, you got, you got young weapons, you know, their age, hopefully they mature fast enough for you and they don't have, you know, rookie, rookie slumps, you know, as you would say in baseball, Yep. So hopefully they, they, they pull out for you and, uh, Cortland Sutton can have a sleeper, sleeper all pro year where nobody's ever even talking about him like top five. Like he could be a top five wide receiver in the NFL this year if everything pans out. That's how much I believe in him. And having Jerry Judy, who arguably is on paper is the top receiver out of the three that the big three that were picked in the first round, uh, can have a magic year down there as well. And uh, we're going to see. I'm, I would be excited if I was a Bronco fan. You know, you got new new, new weapons to, to go with with the quarterback. New toys, baby. New toys. new toys. Absolutely. It's like a kid on Christmas Day, you know, waking up those presents. That's so, it. This came early. Absolutely. I'd be, I'd be excited. I'm going to go into my team, the Giants. Uh, we didn't pick anybody up in the draft, but I'm still happy with our – core if we stay healthy again the big key word is if sterling shepherd concussion problems evan ingram always hurt if those two guys stay healthy you're looking at a top tight end in the league this year and a top 10 wide receiver in evan, the evan ingram is a beast man beast if, if he, he like you're healthy. saying and then sleeper guy who came out of nowhere and we had Stephen baker on one of our shows, uh, one of our live shows, Stephen Baker said that he is very high on Darius Slayton as well. Yeah. He came out of nowhere last year, and I'm excited to see what he brings in year two with Danny Dimes as our quarterback and, of course, Saquon Barkley. Um, I'm excited about the Giants' offense, and it could be a very sneaky sleeper offense. Totally agree. I like uh, it. I think we got time for a couple more, Kurt. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go in your division and um you know I'm not a fan of the quarterback, but when you're going to put Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup and I think that's going to be their number one receiver, CD Lamb. That's a nice treat uh threesome for uh a wide receiver. Add in the best offensive line. It, it, again, it's a reason why there should be no BS excuses. Why Dak Prescott shouldn't get that team easily, easily in the NFC to an NFC championship game. Do I think he will? No. But as a core, Gallup, Cooper, and CeeDee Lamb, that's a problem. Dangerous. Dangerous. Dangerous for defenses. That's a problem. Like, dangerous for defenses like the Giants. I'll tell you that right now. Mm-hmm. I got one. And then I, I think we got time for one more after this, maybe each. I'm going to throw the Cincinnati Bengals out there. If A.J. Green's back. If A.J. Green comes back, that was going to be my first keyword. But you still got Tyler Boyd, who John Bielen, our fantasy guru, loves him. Is, and I do too. You know, not to take anything away from John because he's the fantasy guy, but Tyler Boyd's been my guy too in fantasy football. Uh, and T. Higgins, you know, and, and then – you know, see what you get out of Joe Burrow. You got Joe Mixon in the backfield, and Tyler Eifert's still there. I mean, Eifert's got to stay healthy, of course, but mm-hmm. you still got Tyler Eifert. Okay. But Green is is by far the key of the offense. If A.J. Green can come back and be the mentor to that team, the veteran, that that team can win, can take big leaps and bounds this year with that offense – Maybe win six, seven, eight games this year. You want to know what's – you want to know what's fu- – When you only won two games last year. Yeah, the only way is up. You know what's funny? Nobody mentioned the Kansas City Chiefs. 
Yeah, I mean, that's another obvious one. I got, got one more. I got one give, more give for us you. One more. We got time for one more. All right. My one more, Arizona Cardinals. Christian Kirk. Now you got Hopkins. You add, still got Fitzgerald. Uh, Kenyon Drake in the passing game. And Kingsbury at, with, with, with that passing game offense. I mean, I'm not going to say they're going to be a great team, like wins and losses, but on a fantasy level, he's going to put up humongous numbers. I'm big on, I've always been, I've always liked Kyler Murray. And again, just like Denver with the one-on-one matchups, someone's going to have to get single covered. So you can't cover everybody double. Now putting Hopkins in there with Christian Kirk and Fitzgerald. I like them. I, I couldn't agree more. That, that, that's a team that can make a run in the AFC in NFC West. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, my closing thoughts on today's short is going to be, I would not want to be a defense in today's NFL. No, not a top defense. No way. I mean, I'm a giants fan and there's too many good wide receiving cores out there. And we didn't even get into the running backs of these right. teams. Which way, the it'll be on another team. short. We just got into the wide receivers today, and we didn't even get into running backs or quarterbacks yet. Yep. With, I would not want to be a defense in today's NFL that's not that good. Yes, sir. So, those are my closing thoughts. What are your closing thoughts, Kurt, before my, we close? My closing out? thoughts, it's the same thing. I mean, you know, it, it's a lot of weapons. We didn't even get into Atlanta with Ridley and Julio Jones. Man, I got uh, Seattle, Seattle. Metcalf. Seattle, Lock. yeah. It's, it's... They picked up Greg Olson. You know, this, the Packers still got Devontae Adams. You know, and, and their guys there with Rodgers, you know, that just up and down. I would not want to be an NFL defense. Totally agree. All right, Mr. Kirkpatrick, that was a good one. Yes. Uh, on behalf of Kurt Valenti, I'm Kenny the Fraud Slayer from the KNK Sports Show. And thank you for listening to this YouTube short. Until we see you next time. See you guys next time.